Our next guest is an author and staff writer at The Atlantic. His new book, Romney, A Reckoning, is on sale now. Please welcome back to the show, McKay Coppins, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. So uh, this is a very impressive uh, book because of the amount of access you were granted by Mitt Romney. He gave you uh, journals, he gave you texts, he gave you access to emails he wrote. Um, uh, are you surprised at, at how much he gave you? I was surprised when he agreed to do it at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because, you know, Mitt Romney, it, it was known for most of his political career as like this very cautious, uh, you know, restrained, calculated politician who was stuck to his talking points. And when I approached him about doing this book, I told him, I only want to do this if you're ready to be fully candid. And I knew he was on board when, like, a couple weeks into it, he sent me a text. I was actually at church. I got a text from him. He says, hey, check your email. I, I sent you something that might be interesting. And it was just hundreds of pages of his journals. Uh, and I was like, oh, wow. All yeah. right, we're going to do this for real. He already was, he sort of started as an outsider in the Senate. Uh, you know, he had, he had uh, been vocally uh, opposed to Donald Trump, and, and especially on character. Mm. And then he joins a Senate uh, where the GOP caucus is obviously very full-throated in their defense of Donald Trump. Yet I imagine he has to be even more on the outside now that this book has come out. Have you spoken to him since it's been released? Yeah, well, a, a few weeks ago, like, the first excerpts from the book came out, and... Uh, you know, he says some, like, very damning things about a lot of his colleagues in the Senate. And uh, I, I, I checked in with his staff. I was like, how's everything going? They were like, he's skipping the caucus lunches for a little while. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, he's doing okay. I mean, he knew that this was going to make for, uh, like, a weird few weeks or months at work. Uh, but, you know, it's to his credit that he, he went along with it. Well, you know, it's called A, a Reckoning, and, and that's a very apt title for this book, and even you talk about how he was very careful with his words. It does feel like this moment has broken him yeah. to some degree, yeah. and it's broken his spirit, and he is using this as a warning to all of us. I, I think that's why he ultimately decided to do this. He, if I approached him just a few weeks after January 6th, and um, <clears throat> I still remember our first meeting was in his, like, little Senate office. The barbed wire fence was still around the Capitol. And he, like, something snapped in him almost after January 6th because it, it demonstrated just how far his party had kind of descended into what he considers authoritarianism. He told me in one of our first meetings, you know, a, a very large portion of my party really doesn't believe in the Constitution. And I think that was eye-opening for him. And he decided that it was time to sort of tell the stories that he uh, of what he had seen inside these caucus rooms, inside Republican politics over the last 30 years, so that Americans would know uh, you know, just what we're up against, what's, what's happening and what's happening to his party. There's a very real, uh, obviously, threat he's addressing. There's also, you know, very funny ways he describes his colleagues. <laughs> um, uh, uh, well, not that funny. Ted Cruz, scary, demagogue, frightening. Uh, uh, Mitch McConnell told Romney, you're lucky you can say the things we all think. That is one of Romney's messages, is he isn't actually the only one who thinks this. He's right. the only one who says it out loud. Um, J.D. Vance, I don't know that I can disrespect someone more than J.D. Vance. <laughs> How do you sit next to him at lunch? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and now he's stuck sitting next to him at lunch. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, look, like, people, when, when these quotes started to come out, people were like, oh, Mitt Romney is being petty, or he's, you know, consumed with these old resentments or whatever. But, like... I think it's really, he's, he's kind of heartbroken. Like, he believed in this party. He believed in the, the, what he thought were the core tenets of the Republican Party. And instead, what it turns out is, like, all these guys that he, he once respected just lined up behind this, like, manifestly crazy person and Donald Trump. And now he, ha you know, and they're all telling him in private, we agree with you, Mitt, but we can't say the same things because we have to win re-election. And so I, I think that, you know, He's well within his rights to uh, to say a few of these quotes that we, we have in the book. And it's also interesting because this is, you know, you sort of have documentary evidence. This is not something that he's doing now. These are things that he's written in journals. These are things, yeah. he, these are thoughts he's had 
uh, in Going back time. a decade or, or longer. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Donald Trump, uh, it won't surprise anybody, uh, was not a fan of the book. Um, <laughs> But I should know, this is, I want to just read uh, the first uh, a couple lines, uh, because this is a biography. Correct. You wrote this book. Yeah, that's right. Mitt Romney, a total loser that only a mother could love, just wrote a book. <laughs> which is much like him, boring, horrible, and totally predictable. So, <laughs> so Donald Trump thinks that Mitt Romney wrote a book. He did. <laughs> He seems slightly confused between biography and memoir. Yeah. In his defense, he probably has never read one of either. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I think that's accurate. I, I will say, I, I will say, I texted it I, when I saw that. I texted that to Mid, and uh, his response, his response was, ha ha ha. He's such a whack job. That's yeah. Right. That's a... <laughs> it's so funny because, like. Trump might think he wrote it because his face is on the cover, but if that's true, Trump wrote 100 books this year. <laughs> <laughs> like, Donald Trump's on the cover of every other book. Uh, you also, uh, it does seem like, you know, a lot of, as, certainly as, as excerpts coming out, a lot of the press is talking about the moment we're living in now, but in 2012, uh, Romney obviously was the GOP nominee running uh, against Obama, and uh, you discovered, not a thing you knew, not a thing people are paying that much attention to now that in 2012, six weeks before the election, he almost dropped out. Yeah, this is one of the most fascinating things I found in his journals. Like, you know, it, it was after um, those, those, that hot mic moment came out. Remember when he talked about the 47% of Americans yeah. who would never vote for him and he kind of disparaged them? It was in a, a closed door fundraiser. So that tape came out. And, um, you know, at the time, publicly, he tried to defend himself and say, the comments are being taken out of context and, or whatever. In his journals, he was anguished over this coming out to the point where people in his circle thought he was like clinically depressed. He couldn't sleep, he couldn't eat. He would every night go into his journals and write like, I can't, I'm so stupid, I can't believe I did this. He re really beating himself up. And he writes about in his journals one night Six weeks before the election, he called the chief strategist of his campaign and said, I think I need to drop out. Um, and you should let Chris Christie or somebody take, take the job. That's how kind of how depressed he was. I think it also speaks to like, there's something about Mitt Romney where he like desperately hates letting people down. And he felt like with that, you know, that gaffe that was kind of derailing his campaign, he had let down his, you know, the people who supported him, the people who donated to him. Um, you know, he eventually pulled himself back up and uh, he lost the election. But, it, the, you know, that, that moment I thought was really revealing. It must be a weird time for him because he is still a conservative. He has uh, conservative principles. He stands for a lot of... Uh, conservative ideals, and yet uh, his party has, uh, yeah. you know, ostracized him. There are times where the left, you know, eats it up when he says negative things about his colleagues, but ultimately he's no hero of the left either. Um, one thing that I did find, uh, you know, endearing on a human level is he has connected with President Biden on just the idea of what it's like to age. <laughs> yes, he's true. <laughs> He has struck up this friendship with Joe Biden in the last couple of years because he found that, like, they actually get along on, you know, on, on some things, even though they disagree on politics. Um, and, and they spend a lot of their time commiserating about the indignities of getting old, as two old guys are wont to do. Um, but there's this one story about apparently... Um, during one of these calls, he told Joe Biden, you know, I've been watching some of your public events and you, you shuffle when you walk and it makes you look old. And uh, one, one of the tricks that I've learned is take longer strides. It'll make you look youthful and energetic. And, uh, and so apparently a few weeks later, Joe Biden called him back and said, Mitt, I, I, I took your advice and it worked. Uh, I, I, he said, I, given this, uh, I, I gave a speech and I finished and I was leaving the stage and I made a point to take big, long steps. And uh, I got off and the first lady was there and she said, what's gotten into you? <laughs> well, uh, he should write a book, like how to walk <laughs> impressively. Yeah, uh, exactly. uh, congratulations on this. Thank uh, thanks so much for being here tonight. Right, I really enjoyed talking to you. Okay, Collins, everybody. Romney, a reckoning is on now. We'll be right back with more.